Yeah, okay. nice to meet you too. Okay. So uh, I'll start with the introduction. So welcome, mm -hmm. Professor Asuki Kumia, um, okay. for our um, keynote talk on uh, day two of the IGNC uh, 2021 conference. So Professor uh, Asuki Komiya re received his BE in 1997 and ME in 1999 in mechanical engineering from the Tohoku University, Japan. In 2002, he received the PhD in mechanical engineering in the same university. From 2002 to 2004, he was a research fellow with uh, JAXA. He worked the development of the facility of fluid experiments for space. In 2004, he moved to the Tohoku University as an assistant professor. And since 2019, he has been a professor of heat transfer control laboratory in the Institute of Fluid Science, Tohoku University. He is the author of two books, more than 100 articles. Professor Komia's award and honors include the Young Researcher Award and Scientific Contribution Award of the Heat Transfer Society of Japan and the Young Scientist Prize of the Commendation for Science and Technology by the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. So Professor Komia will give a talk on evolution of the possibility of, to control mass diffusion process by a membrane with macro, macro pore patterning. So okay. can I, can I start? You. Yeah, we, you can start the talk. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for your very kind introduction, Professor Palaf. So uh, my name is Atsuki Komiya uh, from the Institute of Fluid Science, Tohoku University, Japan. So I like to today I like to talk about the yeah, my current research topic, uh, which is titled on the yeah, evaluation of the yeah, possibility uh, to control the mass diffusion uh, process uh, by a membrane uh, with the microscope macropore uh, patterning. Uh, before uh, starting my talk, uh, I'd like to thank Professor uh, Arvand and, and uh, Ashis, uh, who is the uh, committee member of the, uh, this conference, uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to have a keynote talk in front of the uh, uh, Indian Heat Mass Transfer Society members. So it's really appreciated. So the, uh, my title is here, uh, and I uh, just start the, uh, my talk. Yes. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the contents of the, my talk. Uh, first, I'd like to express, explain the, uh, the motivation and the background of my talk. Uh, and uh, through the, the experimental topic, procedures, and experimental setup, results, uh, and short discussion, uh, my talk will switch to the, uh, the numerical simulation topic. And finally, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I think that the other 45 minutes is allocated for me. I think that I will close you know, my talk within the 40, 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, here's the motivation and the background. So the, when we uh, discuss the uh, mass transfer, uh, mass transfer topic, uh, diffusion coefficient, one of the other uh, some physical properties. This is the quite important key property uh, for the transport phenomena. Uh, I think that everybody knows that. So it has a temperature and concentration dependencies. Uh, usually uh, we can find the uh, value of uh, diffusion coefficient uh, from the database, uh, but for the practical use, the, uh, we have to consider the, uh, how, what kind of the uh, conditions uh, we the uh, diffusion process occurs. So it means that you know, under the extreme conditions, we have to know the uh, uh, exact value of the diffusion coefficient. For example, under the condition of high viscosity or the multi-component system, or uh, under the exposure of the uh, electromagnetic wave, or in the case of the uh, very acidic or alkalic conditions, uh, diffusion changes, or uh, nowadays, the, uh, the, some guys uh, go to the, uh, the space and they, uh, they enjoy the, in the International Space Station. In this case, uh, we have no exter external force, something like a gravitational force. So under these kind of the extreme conditions, the diffusion coefficient changes. So the, uh, the measurement of the diffusion coefficient under the several conditions are very, very uh, required. 
in a case of the protein diffusion in a intravital in a human body in an intravital condition are also uh, important. So the evaluating of the uh, surrounding condition uh, effect is very important. Uh, and the evaluation of the uh, interaction uh, between the uh, multi-component system also important uh, for the discussion of the, uh, some digestive uh, reaction process in a uh, vital condition, or the evaluation of the mass transfer in a complex system is also important. So that uh, when we consider the uh, some uh, protein transport uh, in the organs or the cells in an intravital condition, uh, this is not a free diffusion. So the uh, quantitative evaluation uh, by the precise measurement uh, of diffusion coefficient and uh, mass flux are uh, very important for the discussion of the uh, uh, protein uh, mass transfer. So the remarkable point uh, of the previous studies uh, is here. Uh, so the, uh, we can easily find the, uh, the diffusion coefficient, but they are uh, the, under the free diffusion. We can divide the, uh, the diffusion process into two uh, categories, free diffusion and hinder diffusion. In, uh, in the case of the hinder diffusion, we uh, consider the uh, uh, components in a system, several components in a system. It means that the binary diffusion, tertiary diffusion, or the multi-component interactions, uh, or the spatial conditions. For example, the diffusion process in the membrane or the porous media is a kind of the hinder diffusion. It means the uh, uh, we cannot use the uh, diffusion coefficient under the condition of the free diffusion. So uh, the, uh, from the other viewpoint, uh, we consider the uh, mass transfer uh, we have to consider the, not only diffusion process, but also the uh, advection process, like a natural or first convection system. In a case of the uh, crystallization, uh, uh, crystal growth, so the natural convection sometimes disturbs the, the pure concentration field, something like that, this one. Uh, this is a typical photo of the uh, natural convection, uh, which is uh, occurred around the, uh, the seed crystal. Here, this is a seed crystal, and this is the other saturated uh, solutions. So near the seed crystal, the other uh, concentration is decreased uh, due to the other crystallization uh, and some uh, natural convection occurs. At the initial stage of the seed, uh, crystallization, uh, the four plumes occurs at the, the corner of, of the seed crystal, but times advanced, uh, the, these four uh, plumes uh, join to the one uh, and keep the, uh, the this natural convection. It means partially the uh, diffusion process is different. Uh, this causes this is uh, this causes the uh, defect of the uh, uh, crystallization. So the main uh, cause of the uh, this uh, natural convection is the main cause of the, the low quality of the crystal production. So the mass flux control is uh, very required, strongly required to realize the uh, high quality crystallization. And here is the, uh, just uh, the table of the uh, conventional method to determine the diffusion coefficient. Usually the diffusion coefficient is very, very difficult uh, uh, with some physical properties uh, to determine uh, because it takes uh, quite a long time. Uh, some system, some method uh, needs the, uh, the days or the over 10 hours uh, experiment time. So for example, here uh, in MR method or the Taylor dispersion, it takes over 100 over, uh, hours. So the quite long time is required to measure the diffusion coefficient. The one of the, uh, the precise measurement system to determine the diffusion coefficient is to utilize the, uh, the optical system. Here is a one typical uh, example of the uh, conventional method, namely, a holographic setup. Here, uh, I will skip the uh, details explanation of the, uh, this system, but we, uh, by using this system, we visualize the, the concentration profile, something like that. Uh, and from the other uh, motion of the, these fringes, we can obtain the diffusion coefficient. The result uh, of this paper is here. Uh, here, this one is the, the concentration uh, and the ordinate is a diffusion coefficient. Diffusion coefficient is a function of the concentration, and this visualization data shows the uh, diffusion uh, coefficient. Uh, this is a very, very old uh, paper. Uh, 
like uh, I have uh, maybe the lower, uh, maybe the 1970 or 1980s. Uh, this is another example of the, the holographic method. Uh, this is the, the paper which is published by the 1982, 30 years ago. Uh, but uh, uh, using the optical system, the, uh, the author visualized the, the concentration profile and measured the diffusion coefficient as a function of concentration. So uh, after the very long time later, so we obtain the uh, diffusion coefficient. Uh, but the, uh, in our group, uh, we use the another type of the diffusion, another type of the visualization system uh, that we use the, the uh, max center type interferometer and visualize the transient diffusion field, something like that. Uh, we design the, the special uh, diffusion cell uh, and uh, form the uh, diff uh, transient diffusion field. And from the other, uh, this movie, we can obtain measure the diffusion coefficient. This is just a 30 second measurement, just to start and the, uh, just measure and take a photo of the five seconds later, 10 seconds later, and the 20 seconds later, uh, and we obtain the diffusion coefficient. So from, uh, by using the, this method, uh, our uh, laboratory team measure the diffusion coefficient of the, the several material, such as the uh, organic one, non-organic one, and proteins one. And if the, we assume that the diffusion coefficient is a function of the, uh, uh, is proportional to the uh, uh, molecular size, uh, the power of the other uh, uh, minus uh, one third, the uh, diffusion coefficient uh, and the, uh, the relation between the diffusion coefficient and the molecular mass is something like a red line. Almost of the all data, all uh, diffusion coefficient put on the uh, this line or the over plus minus 20% lines. But some protein shows the uh, is plotted just outside of the uh, this area. So it means the other uh, sum of the other uh, pro, uh, protein it shows the uh, abnormal uh, diffusion process where we, uh, this is a uh, kind of the other something like functional uh, diffusion phenomenon. So by using, if we can use the, uh, this kind of the functional uh, ones, uh, we can control the diffusion and also mass flux. So uh, right now, the, our team has the other one motivations. Uh, we'd like to make the other very huge size scale uh, of the other seed crystal of the protein. The question is here, how do we form the large single crystal under the terrestrial, con terrestrial condition? Of course, we have to consider the, uh, the gravitational problem, something like a plume problem, a uh, natural convection, or the non-uniform and anisotropic formation, something like this one. Here, a uh, seeding and a wall, the concentration profile is uh, different. So it means the, the crystallization rate is different. Uh, we have to decrease the uh, advection uh, and we only focus on the other uh, diffusion. Uh, here is a typical graph of the other uh, zero uh, crystal problem. Uh, abscissa is a ready number uh, and ordinate is the uh, pecle number. So here, uh, this movie shows that the uh, natural convection disturbs the uh, concentration field near the zero crystal. Uh, and this graph shows the uh, diffusion transfer is dominant. Uh, in a small size, only small size, diffusion start. So the, the, please check it, this one. In this area, diffusion dominant, and this one is a convection or the advection dominant. So uh, the, uh, the here, the critical rating number uh, is the approximately 5,000. Uh, from the definition of the, the critical number, uh, critical rating number, the uh, typical uh, characteristic length should be smaller than two millimeter. If the uh, seed crystal is smaller than the two millimeter, uh, that, uh, we can make the pure purified uh, seed crystal. But unfortunately, the, uh, now the uh, society or the social uh, needs the uh, more huge uh, seed crystal for making the uh, semiconductor or the pharmacy uh, field also. So the other question is how to how do we control the other convective heat transfer and keep the other very very uh, uniform concentration field around the other seed crystal. So the other natural convection reduction and diffusion control are strongly required. 
So the other, we have the other one idea. So the other active, namely active control of the protein mass flux by microporal membranes. Usually the other seed crystal shows the other plumes, something like this one under the other terrestrial conditions. And if we cover the other quite tiny dome uh, around the other seed crystal, uh, the other natural convection, natural convection will be reduced. Uh, and also if we uh, can control the other supply of the molecules using the other uh, pore structure of the other uh, this dome, uh, we will make the other uh, pure uh, diffusion field. Uh, this is the uh, concept of the other uh, micropore membrane uh, here, this one. So by using the other uh, uh, pore uh, or the some the narrow channel, uh, the other uh, uh, mass transfer will be controlled. We call this one is the active control. Uh, and in this uh, study, uh, we just visualize the uh, concentration profile in the vicinity of the uh, functional membrane uh, by using the uh, interferometer and evaluate how do we control the uh, mass flux by using the uh, uh, micro nano structure uh, membranes. So the objective of this study is here, uh, the variation of the effect of the micropore patterning on the mass flux, uh, experimentally and numerically uh, evaluate the other relationship between the other mass flux and the uh, micropore uh, patterning, uh, and control mass flux by changing the micropore structures. Here, this is the experimental setup. Uh, we used the, uh, the max sender interferometer uh, but the, uh, this one is a specially designed one, namely phase shifting maximum interferometer. Here, uh, we put the diffusion cell here, uh, and uh, this cell has the other two pools. Uh, one is for the lighter solution, and the uh, bottom one is the lower solutions. And here is a field of view. Only the upper area we visualized. Uh, and from the top, uh, we put the uh, pure water or the lighter solution uh, by the injector. Uh, and uh, from this hole, uh, we use the uh, solution, heavier solution. In this case, the other protein in aqueous solutions. So both two uh, solution uh, is separated by the uh, special membrane here, uh, something like a half say, um, a pore, uh, ice pore membrane or the mini pores one, or the, uh, something like a half say, a porous media type uh, membranes. Uh, and the, uh, by through the, uh, the this membrane, the uh, protein uh, is uh, moved to the uh, upper area and the diffusion start. The size of the uh, diffusion area is only two, uh, 20 millimeter. It's a very, very small experiment. Uh, and uh, here uh, we use the, uh, the phase uh, shifting technique. Uh, what is a phase shifting technique? I will explain in uh, this uh, graph, uh, this view graph. Phase shifting technique is a kind of the image processing system. Here, uh, usually we uh, express the uh, electrical field of the NF program using this equation. Uh, if the electrical field is a function of the uh, 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 amplitude uh, and uh, frequency uh, of the uh, electromagnetic waves and the shape of the, uh, 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 the sorry, profile of the uh, electro Electrical, electric field is the uh, sinusoidal one, and the intensity of the interferogram uh, obtained by the interferogram uh, is a, a sinusoidal shape, something like this one. It's a dark point or the bright point, dark point. The, uh, the profile or the distribution of the intensity is a sinusoidal case, something like this one. In this case, we can only uh, plot the, uh, the darkest point or the brightest point uh, and the data is discontinuous, spatially discontinuous. But by using the other phase shifted data, the other continuous, spatially continuous uh, inter, uh, intensity is obtained. So the other, this is a definition of the uh, intensity here. Uh, we use the other three different angle images. In the case of the other negative 45 degree, zero degree and 45 degree, from the intensity distribution of the three images, we can obtain the other phase difference. And in case of the zero, 120, and 240, it's something like a shape of the other uh, emblem of the Mercer spent. Uh, this one, uh, we use the other uh, I, this one, and this one, and this one. We obtain the other uh, phase difference here. 
And from uh, this phase difference, we change the, uh, the this uh, distribution from the color image. It's a not color image, grayscale image. We obtain the uh, diffusion. Uh, we obtain the phase shifted data. But the question is, is how can we obtain three different images at once? So we solve this problem using this type uh, and this type. The left one is the using the prism, special prism. The uh, laser from the interferometer can be divided into the three uh, lasers, three beams, one, two, uh, and three. Uh, and just in front of the CCD sensor, uh, we put the, uh, the uh, polarizer, which is angle one, angle two, and angle three. So the other uh, all data is go to the other uh, image processing unit and analyze the other uh, data. Second system is the uh, rotating polarizers. We have the only one CCD sensor, but in front of the CCD sensor, we put the other rotating polarizer. At the time const time instant, a time one and a time t two and a time t three, the uh, image is obtained. Uh, but the, the angle of the rotating polarizer is different, angle one, angle two, and angle three. So that this image data is moved to the other in, uh, image processing unit and uh, analyze the images. By using this system, uh, we obtain the other phase shifted data uh, and uh, precisely measure the transient diffusion field. So here, this is just the concept of the phase shifted data. Uh, usually, uh, the concentration profile is something like this one. This is the initial one, and after diffusion start diffusion, uh, dist uh, concentration distribution is something like this one. When we visualize the, uh, this phenomena using the uh, uh, original or conventional uh, images, interferograms, interferometer, the image is something like this one. Just putting up the uh, bright point and dark point and bright point, dark point, the other line is something like this one, and we uh, draw the uh, something like this line uh, and measure the diffusion process. This is especially discontinuous data and quite low accuracy, and it causes the other large measurement errors. But in case of the, uh, the phase shifted data, that uh, all pixel has the intensity data, uh, and this uh, zigzag uh, intensity data uh, is uh, connected something like this one. And finally, it, we obtain the uh, spatially continuous concentration profile. So the uh, advantage of this one is the spatially high resolution. And also we can detect the uh, very, very slight change uh, data, something like this one or uh, this one. By using this phase shifted data, uh, we visualize the hinder diffusion in the vicinity of the uh, membranes. Here, this is a software my student made it. Uh, this is the, uh, the just visualized and automatically the fringe pattern changes to the, uh, the concentration profile. Here, this is a camera and this camera is just 19 degree, uh, how to say, rotated. So here's the upper area. Uh, this is the, uh, the lower area. Now, the, the cubit has the half size, uh, sorry, a uh, half level. Uh, is occupied by the other, uh, heavy solution. And now the uh, upper solution is injected from here. This is a gas area. This is the liquid area. And now the upper solution is inserted and put on the other heavier solution. Of course, these uh, two solution has the uh, concentration uh, difference. And uh, this fringe shows the uh, concentration difference. And here is the uh, average data of the intensity of the, this green area. And automatically, this zigzag line is connected. And uh, concentration profile is automatically uh, drawn. And after t is equal t1, t is equal t2, t3, t4, t5, and we obtain the uh, transient diffusion field, something like this one. And from the other uh, change of this concentration profile, uh, we uh, automatically obtain the diffusion coefficient. The diffusion coefficient. So, uh, by using this system, uh, we try to evaluate the uh, hinder diffusion. So the uh, membrane is this one. Uh, the left one is isopore one, uh, and the right one is a millipore, and 
uh, some some uh, structure complicated structures uh, like uh, porous media. We call this one is a PDAT. So in this ice core case, uh, we use the uh, five micron case pore size, ten micron. Two types of the uh, ice core case uh, ice core uh, membrane used uh, used. The thickness of the membrane is a uh, twenty two micron, uh, and the here, uh, in midipore case, the midipore one is the, the uh, average uh, diameter or the gap uh, of the, uh, the midipore is a five micron. And the PBAT case is a quite a huge case compared with the midipore case, 30, uh, 300 and 460. Uh, the pore, in midipore case, the thickness of the, uh, the midipore is the same one, 22. And PBAT case is a very large, uh, 500 microns. The structure is here and here. Of course, the of course the isopore case has the, the cylindrical path, many many paths. The uh, size is the uh, pore uh, is five micron ten micron, uh, and this one is a really complicated case. So uh, the thickness is a twenty two or five hundred for PBAT. So we put the uh, this kind of the uh, membrane uh, between the upper solution and the lower solution and measure the diffusion, uh, hinder the diffusion. That is the result. And this is just a comparison between the, the isopore case, five micron and ten micron. The important point, uh, please note that the five micron membrane has the uh, pore area only sixty six point three percent. It means that the area, aperture area uh, of the uh, membrane is 6.3. In 10 micron cases, uh, approximately the same, 6.0%. It means the uh, uh, capable area uh, to pass through the uh, uh, membrane uh, is approximately the same. That is a result, visualized result. Five micron case, 10 micron case. You can see that, that, um, that as time advanced, the diffusion process uh, is progressing. Uh, and it lovely says the transient diffusion field uh, uh, is same. The uh, transient diffusion field was clearly uh, firstly visualized. And the diffusion field show a one dimensional profile like this one. So we can easily obtain the mass of flux and diffusion coefficient from the visualized data. And, that, and the mass flux near the membrane, near here, uh, was expected to be same between the five micron case and the 10 micron case, uh, because the uh, uh, aperture ratio is same. So let's check that the uh, concentration profile and the mass flux. Here, this figure shows the relation between the uh, this uh, position and the concentration. Uh, this is the uh, uh, membrane position, and this is the distance from the membrane from the surface upper area, and that is a concentration. You can find that. Lovely says the uh, concentration profile uh, is same, but near the membrane where we have the uh, slight small difference, concentration. Uh, at the five micron case is larger than the other blue one, 10 micron case. The question is uh, why the concentration differ even the other uh, channel area size, area ratio is equal. And the, here, uh, this is the uh, uh, graph, uh, which is showing the uh, elapsed time and mass flux. You can see that at the early stage of the diffusion, uh, both two types of the hinder diffusion shows the, the same mass flux. But after a very long time later, the 10 micron case shows larger. So at the initial stage, the, the both two uh, shows the same. But after that, the, uh, uh, this data uh, has, has a difference here. So the, the mass flux at the 10 micron is larger than the, uh, that of the 5 micron case. So it means that uh, something uh, strange, some uh, strange uh, diffusion uh, occurs uh, in case of the five micron and the ten micron case. This is a uh, comparison uh, of the uh, five micron isopore and the five micron midipore case. A previous one is the both isopore, but this one is isopore uh, and midipore. The average size of the midipore is same, five microns. Uh, the uh, cross section is something like this one. It's the uh, cylindrical path and a complicated, a very structured path. 
the typical and the average size of the mic, uh, channel pass is a five micron. So that is yeah, the visualization result. Uh, this one is a five micron midi pore membrane, and this one is yeah, the high pore membrane. You can see that the fringe number and the fringe uh, form is really the uh, same. So uh, the diffusion field show a one-dimensional profile in both two cases. Uh, even though many channels exist in a midi pore case, but the mass flux uh, is the same as uh, that of the isopores. So the, the complicated structure hinders more uh, mass transfer. So this is just uh, the, the open discussion point, uh, but the, the experimental results show that if the, the uh, typical diameter of the uh, ch uh, channel uh, is the same, the mass flux and diffusion coefficient uh, will be the same. And this is a comparison between a five micron, a same one. Uh, this is just a graph. Uh, the, uh, this one is a concentration profile, and this one uh, is the mass flux uh, variation. You can see that uh, the, uh, the concentration profile is the same as the uh, midi pore case, is the same as the uh, ice pore case. In the midi pore case, we have the very big uh, error uh, because the, uh, it's, uh, the data is scattered. Uh, and the other, this one is a three sigma, uh, and it, it's difficult to, di uh, difficult. It's very difficult to discuss the uh, uh, difference between the red one and the uh, green one uh, in this case. But Luffy says that a concentration profile is approximately the same, and mass flux also keep the same. There's no big difference between the uh, five micron isopore and a midi pore case. Okay, let's move on to the topic of the large scale a midi pore uh, one, PB80 membranes. So we have the uh, 30, uh, 300 micron and 460 micron, quite a huge case, a uh, complicated structures one. So the experimental results show that we have the difference between the 300 and 460. You can see that the uh, shape of the uh, fringe pattern is different here and here, and also the height. It means yeah, the uh, concentration uh, concentration profile area uh, is also different. One dimensional concentration profile cannot be observed in the case of the 300 and the 460. And it means an unusual diffusion process was found uh, because the uh, size is uh, quite huge compared with the other uh, mini pore case. So it means that partially the diffusion uh, occurs and partially completely stop the diffusion so that we cannot find the uh, one-dimensional, very beautiful, a uh, one-dimensional process one. And a significant difference of the mass flux between two PBATs uh, was observed. So it means uh, that uh, in the case of the other larger one, a uh, larger uh, pore structure, uh, we have the uh, strange diffusion, uh, strange diffusion process inside of the other membrane. Here, this is the other concentration profile and a mass flux variation. Uh, here, uh, you can see that the other concentration profile is a different, slightly different, but uh, still we have the uh, very big error bars. So the other uh, the, uh, all red line. Uh, is inside of the other uh, blue line. So this is also difficult to discuss in detail about the uh, difference of the other uh, red one and blue one. Uh, but the other uh, concentration, sorry, a uh, mass flux, we have the uh, clearly a uh, difference between the other uh, large one and the small one. Here, uh, for example, the 460, the mass flux is the approximately 7.5. Uh, and the, uh, in the case of the 300 case, the less than five. So no difference uh, of, of concentration profile was found and the mass flux is roughly uh, kept the uh, time elapsed. It means the uh, no temporal variation is achieved in case of the uh, uh, large uh, poor membrane. This is a kind of the uh, isomass flux condition is achieved. So uh, please let's go back to the, the poor, uh, midi-poor one. 
uh, gradually the, the mass flux decreases. Uh, this is the same as the, the free diffusion. Uh, but in case of the larger one, we can control the uh, mass flux. No temporal uh, control of this one. So the, uh, using the uh, PVAT, mini pore or the small uh, isopore membrane, uh, we have some strange uh, diffusion field. And to evaluate precisely uh, and uh, quantitatively evaluate the uh, uh, hinder diffusion through the micro channel, uh, we use the uh, regularly patterned uh, membranes, something like this one. So the uh, pore size is not too small, like a five micron or 10, uh, 10 microns. Uh, the uh, next target is a 100 micron, 150 and 200 micron. Uh, but important point is the, uh, these three uh, pore membrane is, uh, has the same aperture ratio. So it means the, uh, the distance uh, between the uh, neighboring pore uh, is different. So the uh, definition of the aperture ratio is here. Uh, just a channel area divided by the uh, full area. So this is a uh, blue area divided by the uh, all area. So that each uh, plate uh, has the uh, 4.9% uh, aperture ratio. So all the, uh, the expected data is uh, all concentration profile and mass flux uh, is same. Uh, because the, the aperture ratio is the same. And we perform the same experiment. Here is the, the fabricated one. This is just a photo of the fabricated one, 100 micron case and 150 case and the 200 micron case. The uh, black point, black one, a uh, black hole, this one, yeah. The whole size uh, is different, but the, the total aperture ratio is same. Please remember that. That is the result. So the time is coming. I like just rush up. Uh, here, this is a, 10, a 100 micron case. This is a 200 micron case. You can see that the fringe number are different. And also, the, uh, how to say, uh, the area uh, of the diffusion is different. This is the, uh, the result. A uh, red one shows a 100 micron case, uh, and the green one is a 200 micron case. You can see that, partially see that the other 150 case here. As you can see that, the, uh, in this pattern one, pattern case, the, uh, we have the, the big difference of the concentration profile. That is the uh, relation between the elapsed time and the mass flux and also penetrated mass. Here, you can see that in the case of the 10 micron case, the very big mass flux keeps. Uh, but the, uh, in the case of the 200 microns, uh, the uh, mass flux goes down and make the uh, plateau period. So it's a quite a strange diffusion process. Uh, and here is the relation uh, between the, uh, the penetrator mass and the elapsed time. When the uh, diffusion start, the uh, total mass, uh, which is passed through the, uh, the membrane, a uh, total protein uh, milligram. It goes up, goes up. This is a free diffusion, case of the free diffusion. The tendency is also the same, uh, but the, uh, the, when we use the uh, uh, POA, uh, use the uh, special membrane, the uh, penetrated mass is reduced to the uh, 65 to 76%, uh, something like this one. And the interesting point is that penetrated, penetrated mass is uh, different among the uh, these three patterns. The different mass flux and the penetrated mass uh, is observed, even though the same aperture ratio. Why the, uh, this difference occurs? So uh, the, uh, to evaluate the, uh, this phenomena, uh, we perform the numerical simulation. It's completely the uh, same as the uh, experimental conditions. Uh, the two millimeter, two millimeter, and here the thickness is approximately 280 uh, microns, and the diffusion coefficient of the solution is uh, approximately 4.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 10. And here, diffusion coefficient should be a zero, is equal to zero. But uh, we have the some technical problem uh, about the numerical simulation. And the, we just put the, the 
put the uh, negligible, uh, quite a small diffusion coefficient here. Uh, and uh, this is a typical uh, numerical domain in case of the uh, 100 micron case and the 200 micron case. So the, uh, we imitate the, uh, this diffusion uh, field and uh, numer make a numerical simulation. That is the result. Here, this is elapsed time and this is a penetrated mass. As you can see that, as same as the experimental data, 100 micron shows the other large uh, mass flux and penetrated, penetrated mass. In a case, uh, in a case of the other 100 micron, the red line shows larger than the uh, green one. So this is the uh, mass flux uh, and elapsed time. This is a uh, the, just the mass flux on, in the vicinity of the main brain here. After the diffusion starts, uh, suddenly the mass flux goes up and slightly goes down, uh, but the 100 micron shows quite large mass flux compared with the uh, 200 micron case. In the upper area, very far side from the uh, membrane, uh, also 100 micron case keeps the uh, high mass flux. The question is why the, uh, this difference occurs, even though the uh, aperture ratio is same. So uh, this is a two-dimensional, uh, three-dimensional uh, image of the concentration profile near the uh, membrane, just outlet of the, just on the, uh, on the uh, microchannels. Here, this is the edge of the microchannel in case of the 100 micron, and this is the other edge of the 200 micron case. You can see that at the same elapsed time, the 100 uh, micron case shows the one-dimensional diffusion process, even though the 200 micron case show the three-dimensional process. It means the smaller poor case, diffusion is quickly changed to the one-dimensional process from 3D to one-dimensional process. Uh, but the larger poor case, diffusion keeps a three-dimensional process uh, for a while. And after that, it uh, changed to the one-dimensional process. Here, I just check the uh, concentration, uh, sorry, mass flux changes. Uh, over at the uh, certain point. Uh, the first one is just cross, cross point the uh, uh, micropores here. In this case, uh, the uh, near the uh, membrane, uh, sorry, near the uh, pore, the 200 micron case shows larger uh, mass flux. But in case of the other far side, just the middle point of the two neighboring uh, micro channels, and this point, uh, sorry, this point and this point, 100 micron shows a larger mass flux. I think that the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, we have the two uh, factors. Uh, this is the uh, result, uh, result of the uh, concentration profile in case of the early stage of the diffusion and the uh, time after uh, 100 seconds later. You can see that 200 micron shows three dimensional process. But after 10, uh, 100 second, the three, uh, 200 micron case uh, slightly change to the uh, one dimensional process. The, uh, this is the uh, explanation view graph of the two factors. Uh, factor one is the uh, in case of the smaller pore, the ratio uh, of the perimeter uh, on pore area is large. The ratio of the perimeter on the pore area is large. So it causes the, uh, the decrease of the mass transfer along Z direction. But in factor B, in case of the larger pore, uh, the diffusion area in the XY plane, this is just a perpendicular of the other mass flux direction, XY plane is large. This, this is why the other mass transfer along Z direction is a comparatively small. So it takes time to change the uh, direction of the diffusion from 3D to 1D. And also the large pore has to has to have the very huge area, has to cover the very huge area. So this is why the other, we have the difference among the other 100 case, 100, 150, and 200 a micron case. So it means from the experimental and numerical simulation data, uh, we roughly, that, roughly said that uh, we can um, control uh, the other uh, mass flux by changing the other layout of the pores.
Now, in this stage, we just say that yeah, this is the uh, uh, qualitative evaluation. Uh, but by using the numerical simulation, more and more de uh, detailed explanation, uh, sorry, detailed uh, experiment, uh, we uh, can control the uh, mass transfer uh, quantitatively. So there, this is a comparison between the numerical and the experiment among three different process. Here, 100, 150, and a 200 micron case. And this uh, star shows the experimental data. And this one uh, is a numerical simulation data. We have a very big difference between the numerical and experimental data. Uh, but it's a qualitatively same tendency. It means it decreases when the pore size is larger. Uh, but maybe we have the leakage problem in the experimental data. And now the question is how that, uh, this tendency goes in a case of the other more smaller one goes up or goes down. If the other 50 micron case experiment uh, can be done, uh, we uh, solve uh, this uh, problem. Of course, the other, in the case of the pore size is equal to zero, that mass flux should be equal to zero. So the other line should be this one. So, and now uh, we uh, make, oh, and this is a very brand new experimental data. And now we change the uh, diffusion uh, cell. Uh, we uh, adapt the uh, uh, screw type uh, system uh, to fasten the uh, both two upper and lower uh, glass at lower uh, pools. So using this system, uh, we measure the uh, diffusion. Uh, we uh, perform the uh, experiment. Uh, that is the experimental data. In case of the 150, uh, we have the same, uh, approximately same data in case of the previous experimental data. So it means we can use the uh, this uh, data. And in case of the 50 micron, uh, the results show that's quite small. So it means the, uh, uh, the line, uh, the tendency is something like this one. So we'd like to uh, investigate this uh, phenomena uh, using the numerical simulation and the uh, detailed experimental data. And finally, uh, it's time now, time is closing. I'd like to conclude my presentation. Uh, this study focuses on the variation of the relationship between the inner diffusion process of the protein through several types of the membrane and their structures. Uh, we could find the other several things, and the, but the, almost all the old data is still, uh, how to say, qualitatively. So that to quantitative evaluation, uh, we need more experiment and uh, numerical simulations. So finally, uh, I'd like to make an acknowledgement. This research was supported by uh, JSPS Japanese uh, Kakenhi grant. Uh, and also, uh, I'd like to make a very, very special thanks to the, uh, Dr. Juan uh, Felipe Torres uh, in the Australian National University about the uh, numerical research. Uh, and this one, uh, these two guys, Mr. Liu Watanabe and Ms. Lu Yaozu, uh, they are my student and they uh, concentrate on the performing the uh, experiment and they accumulated uh, many, many data. Uh, and Associate Professor Sebastian Libby from the Insalion France, uh, he provided us the, the PV80 membranes. In a case of the uh, larger uh, poor structured one, uh, we also we have to uh, continue uh, this kind of the experimental work. Uh, here is a member of the heat transfer laboratory. Unfortunately, now we are in a COVID situation, so we cannot uh, have a very big party. So the separately we have the uh, party, something like this one. Anyway, so the uh, now time is coming. I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Mm. Is there any question from the audience? I'm so sorry that I speak the 20 or 45 minutes, so yeah. I will not do another time. Uh, no, it's fine. We can have one or two questions if there are. I'm not getting any questions. I have uh, a simple question. Uh, if you are using nanopore instead of micropore, uh, what do you believe the results will be a similar trend? <laughs> it's quite difficult uh, to perform the experiment, but yeah, they, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, we use the yeah, nano size scale, something like a comparable uh, size of the uh, uh, molecules. I think that the yeah, uh, we completely, uh, how to say, control temporarily and spatially. Uh, 
So the other I found the other one not a paper, a uh, journal paper, it's a nature paper. Uh, we if we use the other very, very tiny, small uh, pore, sometimes the how to say uh, it makes the other something like a traffic jam <laughs> of the other molecules. So it means the other uh, completely stop the other uh, mass transfer. But sometimes uh, we slightly pass through the other molecule. And in my experiment, it's a quite huge compared with the other molecular size. So the other, ten, uh, how to say, uh, qualitatively, uh, we discuss about, uh, how to say, which one is a larger, which one is a smaller, mass flux is a larger, smaller or something. But uh, you mentioned that if we, we use the other very, very tiny scale, we have the uh, another uh, story uh, of the other mass transfer. But hopefully yeah, we want to do to that. The first trial is a 100 nanometer or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for a nice question. Thank you. Thank you. I hope there are no other questions. So mm, we will conclude the session. Thank you okay. for your nice talk. And also, thank you very much for the other very nice token. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So the uh, it's really, really uh, appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Thank you very much. You. See you. See you. Bye bye. Bye.